Chapter Fourteen. By and by, when we got up, we turned over the truck the gang had stole off of the wreck, and found boots and blankets and clothes and all sorts of other things, and a lot of books and a spyglass and three boxes of cigars. We hadn't ever been this rich before in neither of our lives. The cigars was prime. We laid off all the afternoon in the woods talking, and me reading the books, and having a general good time. I told Jim all about what happened inside the wreck and at the ferryboat, and I said these kinds of things was adventures. Well, he said he didn't want no more adventures. He said that when I went into Texas and he crawled back to get on the raft and found her gone, he nearly died because he judged it was all up with him any way it could be fixed. For if he didn't get saved, he would get drowned, and if he did get saved, whoever saved him would send him back home so as to get the reward, and then Miss Watson would sell him south, sure. Well, he was right. He was most always right. He had an uncommon level head for a nigger. I read considerable to Jim about kings and dukes and earls and such, and how gaudy they dressed, and how much style they put on, and called each other Your Majesty, and Your Grace, and Your Lordship, and so on, instead of Mister. And Jim's eyes bugged out, and he was interested. He says, I didn't know they was so many of them. I ain't heard about none of em scarcely but old King Solomon, unless you counts dem kings what's in a pack of cards. How much do a king get? Get, I says. Why, they get a thousand dollars a month if they want it. They can have just as much as they want. Everything belongs to them. Ain't that gay? And what they got to do, Huck? They don't do nothing. Why, how you talk? They just sit round. No, is that so? Of course it is. They just sit around, except maybe when there's a war, then they go to the war. But other times they just lazy around or go hawking, just hawking and. Sp uh, sh! Did you hear a noise? We skipped out and looked, but it wa'n't nothing but the flutter of a steamboat's wheel way down coming round the point, so we come back. Yes, says I, and other times when things is dull they fuss with the Parliament, and if everybody don't go just so, they wax their heads off, but mostly they hang around the harem. Round a witch? Harem. What's the harem? The place where they keeps his wives. Don't you know about the harem? Solomon had one. He had about a million wives. Why, yes, that's so. Ah, I done forgot it. A harem's a boarding house, I reckon. Most likely they has rackety times in the nursery. And I reckon the wives quarrels considerable, and that creased the racket. Yet they say Solomon the wisest man did ever live. I don't take no stock in that. Because why? Would a wise man want to live in the midst of such a blim blamin' all the time? No, deed he wouldn't. A wise man had taken Bill a boiler factory, and then he could shut down the boiler factory when he want to rest. Well, he was the wisest man anyway, because the widow she told me so her own self. I don't care what the widow say. He warn't no wise man nother. He had some of the dead fetchinest ways I ever see. Does you know about that child that he was going to chop in two? Yes, the widow told me all about it. Well, then, warn't that the beatinest notion in the world? You just take and look at it for a minute. There's the stump. There. That's one of the woman. Here's you. That's the other one. I, Solomon, and this year dollar bills the child. Both of you claims it. What does I do? Does I shin around amongst the neighbors and find out which in you the bill do belong to, and do hand it over to the right one, all safe and sound, 
de way dat anybody dat had any gumption would? No, I take and whack de bill in two, and give half of it to you, and the other half to the other woman. That's the way Solomon was going to do with the child. Now I want to ask you, what's the use of that half a bill? Can't buy nothing with it. And what use is half a child? I wouldn't give a dern for a million of em. But hang it, Jim, you've clean missed the point. Blame it, you've missed it a thousand mile. Who, me? Go long. Don't talk to me about your points. I reckon I know sense when I sees it. And there ain't no sense in such doings as that. The dispute weren't about half a child. The dispute was about a whole child. And the man to think he can settle a dispute about a whole child with a half a child don't know enough to come in out of the rain. Don't talk to me about Solomon, Huck. I knows him by the back. But I tell you, you don't get the point. Blame the point. I reckon I knows what I knows. And mind you, the real pint is down further. It's down deeper. It lays in the way Solomon was raised. You take a man that's got only one or two chillin'. Is that man going to be wasteful of chillin'? No, he ain't. He can't afford it. He knows how to value em. But you take a man that's got about five million chillin' runnin' round a house, and it's different. He as soon chop a child in two as a cat. There's plenty more. A child or two, more or less, want no consequence to Solomon, dad fetch him. I never see such a nigger. If he got a notion in his head once, there wa'n't no getting it out again. He was the most down on Solomon of any nigger I ever see. So I went to talking about other kings and let Solomon slide. I told about Louis Sixteenth, that got his head cut off in France long time ago, and about his little boy the dolphin, that would have been a king, but they took and shut him up in jail, and some say he died there. Poor little chap. But some says he got out and got away, and come to America. That's good, but he'll be pretty lonesome. There ain't no kings here, is they, Huck? No. Did he can't get no situation. What's he going to do? Well, I don't know. Some of them gets on the police, and some of them learns people how to talk French. Why, Huck, don't the French people talk the same way we does? No, Jim, you couldn't understand a word they said, not a single word. Well, now, I be ding busted. How do that come? I don't know, but it's so. I got some of their jabber out of a book. Suppose man was to come to you and say, Polly vous Francie? What would you think? I wouldn't think nothing. I'd take and bust him over the head. That is, if he weren't white. I wouldn't allow no nigger to call me dat. Shucks, it ain't calling you anything. It's only saying, do you know how to talk French? Well, then, why couldn't he say it? Why, he is a saying it. That's a Frenchman's way of saying it. Well, it's a blame ridiculous way, and I don't want to hear no more about it. There ain't no sense in it. Look you here, Jim. Does a cat talk like we do? No, a cat don't. Well, does a cow? No, a cow don't another. Does a cat talk like a cow, or a cow talk like a cat? No, they don't. It's natural and right for em to talk different from each other, ain't it? Course. And ain't it natural and right for a cat and a cow to talk different from us? Why, most surely it is. Well, then, why ain't it natural and right for a Frenchman to talk different from us? You answer me that. Is a cat a man, Huck? No. Well, then, there ain't no sense in a cat talking like a man. Is a cow a man, or is a cow a cat? No, she ain't either of em. Well, then, she ain't got no business to talk like either one of the other of em. Is a Frenchman a man? Yes. Well, then, Dad blame it, why don't he talk like a man? You answer me, Dad. 
I see it weren't no use wasting words. You can't learn a nigger to argue. So I quit. End of chapter.